okay well let's start today's session by uh, getting introduction and going forward with the molecular docking first of all of uh, thank you so much for being a participant in this particular webinar uh, we are basically a mumbai india based bioinformatics training and consultancy company bringing you this particular session i know that this is not an important part so i will jump right into the session for today so uh, today's webinar is uh, basically intended for beginners and uh, it's about what molecular docking actually is what are the concepts behind it and how we can apply in various kinds of analysis uh, i would really like to thank you so much for asking such interesting and really uh, amazing questions in the registration form and uh, as it was already advertised it was kind of a plan for beginners but again we have lots and lots of people from all different backgrounds and again from various levels of education so we will be keeping this uh, towards uh, introduction to the docking the main applications and main concepts which goes behind it also some important things that you have to consider about uh, setting up and docking experiment and analyzing the data which comes out of it uh, there are few instructions i would like to uh, give you beforehand so uh, lots of questions have been asked and lot of people have registered for this uh, and unfortunately because of the time constraint and the nature of the uh, webinar being an introductory i may not be able to touch upon each and every question but i have picked some really good questions which i'll be answering along with that during the entire session whenever you feel that uh, there is some kind of uh, question that needs to be answered right away you can definitely put it in the chat box and uh, i will answer that uh, by going through it uh, intermittently questions which can wait uh, you can keep it till the end of the session i will try to answer some of the commonly asked questions also at the end and we have a very dedicated question and answer session for answering all your questions so just keep that in mind so agenda for today's webinar is essentially going through uh, the background of molecular docking how does it work what are the uh, principles behind it understanding some basic aspects of biomolecular structures and function uh, going towards you know how does this molecular docking work what are the different types uh, which case to use which type of docking so these are the things we will talk about after uh, going through some of the preparatory steps like how to prepare your molecules for docking especially we'll be talking about protein ligand docking but we will also kind of touch upon some other kinds of docking momentarily there will be a demonstration by using some basic freely available softwares especially autodoc vena combined with the chimera in order to process these molecules and then we'll also try some softwares for analysis of those interactions later we'll also discuss some applications some commonly asked questions or myths about docking which are uh, like out there and again there will be a question and answer session so uh, let's get going with this and start molecular docking there are few things i'm assuming here that most of you who are uh, registered for the workshop they have some basic understanding of uh, the biomolecules in general that how do they work and etc the most of the background that i have checked for the people are with molecular docking is between 1 to 3 1 2 and 3 that means uh, i'm assuming that most of you already know what molecular docking is i are just looking for kind of you know formalizing that into this so i will go and articulate the session accordingly but i will be starting from the very basics for the people who are just entering into this particular field or looking forward to enter into the field so uh, uh, before uh, understanding docking itself we have to just take a step back and understand where does this really come from here on the slide you have some basic examples of different types of biochemical or chemical tests uh, in the first picture you can see catalyst test which is used in identification of certain catalyst positive microorganisms now here what happens is uh, if the catalyst test becomes positive you will see these kind of air bubbles in the slide but if the organism culture that we have is catalyst negative then it basically does not show any kind of airing or bubbles etc so it will be just plain solution that you have poured upon now this is basically externally that you see as a change in morphology or physiology as such here another example is basically the uh, basic change in the cell morphology 
after addition of an inhibitor so there are so there is something happening over here which is making this cell the normal cells convert into such kind of shapes here on the right you have ligand binding as a result where the colors of the reaction mixture change after the ligand binding and many such chemical reactions happen either in the laboratory or in the live system cells also all these reactions all these interactions that happen they happen at the very molecular level or fundamental level when different types of molecules interact with each other and that is the basic chemistry everybody knows so the molecular docking starts from there rather than looking for the things from the external it goes into the atomistic details of these molecular structures and tries to identify what are the possible interactions these molecules will have so the basics of all this is molecular recognition we know that every cellular process happens of course because of many different interactions between the molecules and these interactions are governed by different types of forces which are applied by different atoms on the rest of the atoms and all these together bring about certain changes which we see as various kinds of phenomenon it could be change in color it could be change in the morphology it could be change in some byproducts which are produced or uh, it could be change in the loss of function anything can be there so the goal of the docking is to basically investigate these things so uh, given two structures okay usually the docking is utilized for biomolecular structures uh, especially so that's why it was developed and even uh, the softwares which are available have been optimized for biomolecules so given the structure of two molecules docking tries to attempt to answer two questions one the given two molecules do they interact favorably with each other that is what of course we have to find out that is basically the aim of any biochemical or any test that we try to find out whether the two molecules are interacting with each other or not and if yes if they do interact then what is the orientation of that molecule which maximizes the number of interactions which are there and in turn minimizes the energy energy minimization is of course the natural principle any natural system will always try to optimize itself in such a way that it will minimize the energy of that so on itself of course the molecules has have their own energies but when they interact with each other they uh, change their structures in such a way that together the complex of that molecule also has the minimum possible energy that is the principle of energy minimization so goal of the docking is to find out such poses that in what orientation these two molecules bind to each other with minimum energy so we'll try to understand all those things going forward and uh, like set up a base for all these things as i told you the molecular recognition is governed by all these different types of interactions between various atoms of different molecules for example if you talk about the enzyme substrate complex the complex is formed when there is of course geometric as well as electrostatic complementarity that means the molecules which are involved in the enzyme as well as the substrate they will share some kind of complementarity so that they can attract uh, get attracted towards each other and carry out the function that they are supposed to there are large number of interactions which contribute towards any molecular recognition process there is not just one or not even these that is listed are exclusive but there are multiple different types of variables which come into picture but some of the most uh, commonly studied and have some significant impact on the molecular recognition include van der waals interactions hydrophobic interactions dipole dipole interactions hydrogen bond interactions iron dipole iron iron covalent interactions all of these different types of interactions will make the molecular recognition process much uh, simpler to happen out of this the way that uh, are, these are written they are in the increasing order of their energies hydrophobic interactions are basically uh, van der waals are very weak interactions between these are again non bonded hydrophobic interactions are entropic uh, uh, interactions which happen because of certain types of groups present on the both ligands as well as on the protein or any other receptor hydrogen bond interactions of course important role especially when you are talking about the biomolecules as well as you know drug interactions with bi biological systems etc covalent interactions of course are the strongest they have the highest energy and uh, those you will of course see in certain kinds of ligands 
especially when you're talking about uh, drug related studies or you know studies related to the like natural products to be used in certain kinds of targets the hydrogen bonds definitely play a very important role i will uh, show you an example of that going forward there are many types of interactions hydrogen bond especially are defined by a very simple definition that it is a bond made by hydrogen atom attached to an electronegative atom and another electronegative atom because of the interplay of electrons and the partial charges which appear on these atoms these kind of bonds appear in different things so this is just an example of water molecule over here where the hydrogen which have partial positive charge and the oxygens of other a water molecule which has partial negative charge they will get attracted and will form the hydrogen bonds apart from hydrogen bonds when you are talking about the ligand interactions within the biological system we have many other types of interactions which may play an important role listed here are just few uh, van der waals interactions hydrogen bonds uh, we have pi cation pi sigma interactions there are pi stacking interactions which happen because of the pi cloud of uh, aromatic rings uh, and many other types of reactions so basically in docking the aim is to find out such interactions which happen between the molecules and accordingly score the molecules the hydrogen bonds play an important role i already mentioned this is just an example which signifies that how hydrogen bonds can be helpful so here basically it's a ligand interaction diagram of two drugs bound to the same receptor so here we have a drug which is vox or rafecoxib which is bound to enzyme cox2 that is cyclooxygenase2 and here we have mefenamic acid which is bound to uh, the same enzyme that is cox2 if you look at the activity of these uh, molecules the ic50 for this is 2900 nanomolars while for this is 3400 so activity of this is of course little higher if you look at and correspond it with the hydrogen bond that it makes you will see that this particular drug makes a single hydrogen bond with this amino acid of the pro target while here it makes two hydrogen bonds with these two amino acids serine and tyrosine here so i'm not saying that because of the hydrogen bonds this is the activity because activity is dependent on many different things but you will see a strong correlation between uh, these in increasing activities and increasing hydrogen bonds of different ligands now let's come to the biomolecular structures especially uh, i'm sure that every one of you already knows about how biomolecular structures are formed what is the protein structure how does it come into picture and the dna structures and all so we have lots of biomolecules in our uh, body but mostly for interaction purpose and for the docking purpose the protein and nucleic acids are uh, basically considered and of course the small molecules along with those macromolecules these molecules that we are seeing here the biomolecules they have certain sites on their structural surface which we can call binding sites active sites will differentiate all those types so here for example we have a protein amylase and here is basically a specific region which is recognized by its particular substrate which is of course starch molecule so when it recognizes this surface it basically makes certain interactions with the amino acids which are present within this particular binding site and that's how it is going to interact with the particular enzyme so this particular site which is involved in these substrate uh, functioning is basically called as active site of the enzyme and it is defined by the set of amino acids which provide the necessary interactions for this molecule to bind similarly in molecular docking the more important terms that will be dealing with are binding sites more often we'll be trying to look for the binding sites on a protein surface which can help us uh, find out the interaction of our molecules with the target so the binding sites are basically any site on the protein which which can receive certain types of ligands or small molecules or even other big molecules for interaction so if you look at just active site which has lot of different types of amino acid which can define the like divide it into the binding sites where binding happens and it helps orient the substrate properly and catalytic site will be the amino acid which actually provide the necessary chemical potential to do the interaction 
Binding site generally are not just active site. Active site can also have a binding site. But in general, for uh, other types of ligands, the binding site can be present on various places on this particular protein surface. The binding site can be uh, active site, for example, where your molecule like inhibitor or activator can go and bind into the active site of an enzyme and it can do its function. Either it will inhibit the enzyme or it will activate depending on its function. There are certain types of binding sites which we call as allosteric binding sites. So allosteric binding sites actually are uh, something which are away from the main active site. So what happens in this, the ligand comes and binds somewhere else on the surface. That region is called as allosteric binding site. But the change happens at the active site region by a relay of certain transformations or conformational changes in the structure of the protein. Similarly, we also have some very interesting cryptic binding sites. So these cryptic binding sites are present on very uh, few proteins, but these are usually hidden or buried. So by default, if you look at the protein structure, you will not find any possible binding site. But only when they come in contact with the ligands, that hidden or buried site kind of get exposed out to the exterior. And that's how it forms the particular binding site. So these are the different types of sites which are uh, present on the protein surface and which can be utilized for studying this docking or interaction principles. Binding sites are very important when you are going to study the molecular docking. So we'll very briefly discuss about them. Uh, these are basically nothing but sites as I told you, but they do have some kind of properties that we have to look for. Usually these are uh, either some uh, like pockets or some cavities which are present on the protein surface. They are always not very deep or they are also not very shallow. Usually you will need a good amount of surface area to do maximum number of interactions. So deeper the cavities are more surface area that is polar surface area molecules get in order to perform multiple types of interactions. These binding sites are nothing but they are lined by various kinds of amino acids and depending on their uh, composition of amino acid, they will have varying properties. Usually these binding sites are complementary to their substrates or ligands which are coming. Shape complementarity is one thing but along with that the chemical complementarity is also an important aspect of these uh, bindings. And often these binding sites are flexible in nature. What it means is they can accommodate a variety of different structures which are related to each other. So flexibility again have different types but flexibility can uh, change the shape of the binding site to accommodate different types of structures. So these are all important considerations of when we go for any kind of molecular docking study. These sites are of course present and flexibility is an important parameter over here especially for the enzymes uh, if you're dealing with them. So if you look at the enzyme uh, like action models which describe you know how do the enzyme function we have seen from this uh, kind of you know like school days that there are lock and key hypothesis which tells that if there is a complementarity uh, they will bind. Induced fit model came later which describes that the sites are often flexible and they can change their shape upon ligand binding. And there is also a model of transition state which states upon uh, tells about how substrate shape can also be changed by the enzyme in order to create a transition state and then it will work on it. These kind of models often uh, of course have a very high free energy. So here you can take an, uh, see an example of hexokinase of course an important enzyme and glucose is the substrate for this particular enzyme. So without the glucose, it has this kind of a conformation, a very uh, kind of big binding site as you can see. This is called as open conformation, where when the glucose molecule binds to it, it changes its shape, overall shape, and this uh, binding site as you can see is now reduced to a very small size. So these changes happen because of the flexibility and in order to uh, like come up with the minimum energy stable complex between the protein and the ligand that we have. So that's where this induced fit model is this. So most of the common proteins you will come across and study in this docking procedure, they will be uh, following induced fit model and allowing for flexibility would definitely be a good idea in such cases. So with this little bit background, let's come to molecular docking. What molecular docking actually is, how does it work? 
and how to approach it practically. Molecular docking is basically a computer based technique which is used in order to investigate different molecular interactions. Essentially, it attempts to find the most probable binding conformation of whatever molecules that we have given. Uh, it could be protein, protein, it could be protein ligand, etc. And uh, basically, which will minimize the energy of that particular complex. This is basically dependent on the molecular modeling approaches. So molecular modeling is another field which describes how to treat molecules on screen or on computer, how to model their properties. So these properties, especially the properties that we are talking about here are molecular interactions. So how to use these properties in order to calculate the interactions between two different molecular structures. So essentially our goal in the molecular docking is going to be to find the stable complex of receptor and ligand with possible uh, energy also if it gives it will be of course a better option for us. Now when we are doing molecular docking I just told you that the flexibility is a very important criteria but the same flexibility which is uh, present in different molecules also poses a major challenge to molecular docking calculations. Because of this flexibility, the calculations often can be very computationally extensive or very difficult to perform. The reason is one given molecule can attain many different possible conformations. Naturally, it chooses the conformation which will minimize the energy of that particular system. So to finding that conformation is a very difficult task or very challenging task because we the computer or algorithm has to go through all possible conformations based on wherever there is a flexibility or rotatable bonds are present and then for each of those possible conformations calculate the energy values also and then rank them from uh, the minimum energy to the maximum energy so this entire process is uh, important when you allow for flexibility now when you're talking about just the flexibility of a ligand is another thing because it's a small molecule usually and it will be easy and quick to calculate. But when we talk about the protein molecules, these flexibilities can be very uh, difficult to calculate owing to a large chemical nature of these molecules. That's why we often refer to these molecules also as macromolecular structures. So we'll talk about these a little bit more and how to uh, include them into the docking as well. So when a molecular docking program is essentially running, it is trying to find out what molecular interactions are happening at various places and then it has to rank the structures based on those properties. So molecular interactions, when we look at them, there are various types of molecular interactions which are happening between the atoms. There are certain interactions. So every uh, atom will exert some kind of a force on another atom as and when your number of atoms in the system increases, you have larger and larger contribution of these uh, energies. Then within uh, the molecule, the bonded atoms show some kind of changes which will contribute towards the energy of the system. So when we have a single atom, of course, it's not going to do anything. But when you have two atoms which are covalently connected to each other, so there is a bond stretching which uh, happens. That is basically the vibrational nature of the bonds which contribute certain energies to these molecules. Then even three atoms are bonded. There is angle bending, which also contributes certain amount of energy. When atom uh, set increases, we have the torsional rotations. So around this bond now, the molecule can attain flexibility. So as and when these molecules rotate, they will contribute different types of energies towards the system. And again, we have energies between the molecules that we have to look for. So when this, these are all just within the same molecule, but when it comes to two different molecules, again, we have to consider this together with the other molecule. So between molecule energies or, or interactions are also there. Now, when it comes to this, the software has to go through multiple possible conformations. First, it has to find possible binding sites. So if we already give, then it's a different uh, case, but it, it has to find the exact site where it probably will bind at each possible binding site, it has to go through all possible rotations of the molecule. So it will, at each possible rotation, it has to go and change different bond angles to all possible bond angle parameters. 
and again the confirmations also different so all these changes it has to calculate throughout the calculations of your molecule and every time the location of these or any of the atom is moved the overall energy of the system is going to change because most of these interactions are of course distance based let's take a very simple example of most basic interaction that is coulombic force so if you remember the formula for coulombic force is extremely uh, basic we have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 which is a constant and q1 q2 upon r square so as you can see uh, formula for any of Okay, uh, there was actually some kind of streaming problem. So I've just reconnected the stream. So I think it should be available now. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so in this uh, basically, so I'm really sorry for particular uh, this particular problem that has happened. I will resume this and hopefully there will not be any more interruptions which are due to technical errors. All right, so now we were discussing mostly about the molecular interactions which are happening in this particular molecular uh, states. And we discussed about the types of molecular docking that can be performed by considering various types of things. The first type of molecular docking is basically based on whether do you know the binding site of the protein or not. Based on this, the docking can be the blind docking or it can be the targeted docking. In the blind docking, we usually are not aware of the binding site. So we give the entire protein surface as the potential binding surface and carry out the docking which is often slow and unyielding but at least it can help you uh, identify some possible binding sites there can be multiple possible sites given by blind docking but you can utilize and then focus on individual binding sites for further docking in the targeted docking we have basically a site specific docking where we already provide a potential binding site to the algorithm and it will do the calculations based on these things. So in the targeted docking, it is uh, able to explore more number of confirmations within the local area that has been given as the potential binding sites and that's how it will calculate those interactions. Based on the types of molecules which are used in the docking, the docking can be of various types. So dockings are usually applied for various types of molecules we have protein-protein docking, of course, as the name suggests, that is basically studying the interaction between two proteins. That means given two proteins, how likely they are to actually interact with each other, what is their energy and which part of the proteins are interacting. That means which amino acids are involved in the interactions, etc. Protein-peptide docking are also a specialized form of these uh, docking. So in which one partner is a protein while another partner is a small peptide and the docking is done with the help of that. 
Another type of docking is protein ligand docking in which the one partner is the protein molecule while the another partner is a small molecule which we call as ligand. It could be a drug molecule, it could be an inhibitor, it could be some natural uh, substrate or natural product which can bind to the protein. All those things can be studied under protein ligand docking. We also have protein DNA docking and DNA ligand docking. So in protein and DNA docking, uh, it is used to understand the interactions between the protein and the DNA molecule for which we need the structure of a DNA as well. And in the DNA ligand docking, we can study the interactions between the DNA and small molecular compounds uh, and where and how they interact. So here, as you can see in the diagram, here we have the two proteins which are attached or bound to each other. Here we have the protein and ligand. Here we have the protein and DNA molecule and their interactions. And here we have the DNA molecule and a small molecule compound which is attached to it. So for uh, out of these, the, some of the most common dockings are the protein related docking, the protein, 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 peptide and protein ligand. The DNA docking is also done, but uh, uh, honestly, there are very few options available to perform the DNA docking. Again, you need some really good uh, softwares to generate the 3D structure of your DNA uh, given the sequence. Also, if you have the DNA molecules from the PDB, that is a good thing. You can use those uh, structures definitely. And in DNA ligand docking also, you can perform that. We are going to use a software called Autodoc Vena, which is uh, optimized for the protein and ligand docking. But we will also learn about another options like Autodoc and its variations in order to do all other kinds of docking. Like for example, Autodoc has protein peptide docking. It has DNA ligand docking that is possible using Autodoc. So we will also look for these options. Based on the considerations of flexibility within the molecules, the molecular docking can be of different types. We can perform the rigid receptor and ligand, uh, rigid ligand docking, which is the most simplest and extremely easy, very fast kind of calculation. But it is, of course, is not going to be very accurate. So in this, we take the structure of the protein and allow the ligand in its uh, maybe bioactive conformation or a certain minimum energy conformation to bind to the receptor and find where exactly it binds and what is the potential uh, binding interface of that. The most common type of uh, docking is rigid receptor and flexible ligand docking in which the protein molecule is kept rigid and the ligand is allowed to have uh, the flexibility. So ligand can create different possible conformations and then test all of them against the protein. And another one which is also very useful is flexible receptor and flexible ligand docking. So in this type of docking, both receptor as well as the ligands are kept flexible and all their different conformations are explored in order to study the binding. Usually the entire receptor is not kept flexible but rather the binding site amino acids are kept flexible which is also possible in autodoc as well as autodoc vena. So flexibility again is considered in two ways. So for example, let's say this is our protein and this is the binding site where we have different amino acids. So in uh, flexible docking, you can allow these amino acid side chains to rotate in the different directions in different angles and that will create a flexibility of the binding site. And to incorporate the induced fit model, you along with the side chains, you also have to give flexibility to the backbone of the protein that is the peptide backbone, which can also change its shape a little bit to generate a different shape of that. So this induced fit model can be considered in autodoc and uh, Vena, we can do the side chain conformations by using the flexible docking. So this type of docking reduces the number of calculations significantly. So we have the flexible binding site and the ligand that we are going to use is also going to be flexible. So that will also create a very good docking uh, and it will be very useful to understand how these two interact. If you keep the, uh, keep the entire uh, molecule flexible, uh, it's going to be very heavy calculations and it actually is not very useful because we have better options to study the entire conformational flexibility, like for example, molecular dynamics simulation. So rigid docking is of course very fast and flexible docking takes uh, time. So depending on how many ligands you have, you can choose how much flexibility you can allow in this particular docking. 
Apart from this, we also have many specialized dockings which can be performed by various softwares like Autodock or other like Schrodinger, etc. So, for example, we have induced fit docking where we also allow the backbone of the protein to have flexibility along with the side chains of the amino acids. We have hydrated docking, which is also very useful. A uh, general docking approaches that we do are usually done in the vacuum. That means we are putting the two molecules in a vacuum and studying their interactions. But in reality, these interactions also get affected by the environment around it. Like for example, in the cellular systems, the proteins usually are in an aqueous environment. So there are a lot of water molecules which are around which can enhance or even sometimes disrupt the interactions between ligand and protein. So hydrated docking uh, allows us a possibility to understand how these water molecules in the binding site can play a role in improving the binding of these ligands. So that can also be done in the hydrated docking. For metal ions, if you want to dock against certain proteins and see their interactions, of course we need some special force fields in order to check the metal ions and their interactions. So that can also be done as a uh, a specialized docking so what essentially is happening in this particular docking uh, algorithms is uh, both the proteins and ligand this ligand on the other hand it can be your small molecule as most commonly the ligand will be referred to the small molecule compounds that we use as potential binders but these ligands in the protein protein docking can also be a protein or it can also be a peptide in case of a peptide docking so these can be your ligands so these are prepared for the docking. The preparation steps are very important for the particular any docking that we are going forward with. So we will go through all these steps that what steps need to be taken for preparation. How do we prepare the molecules for docking etc. Then the software takes in the given input the prepared structures as well as some more parameters of the algorithm. And then the ligand is matched to fit at various locations in the given area. It will check uh, various possible confirmations and for every confirmation it will calculate the energy between the protein and the ligand. This values or this score that it calculates will be used to finally score the ligands and give you the best possible poses which are ranked by their affinity. So for different softwares these scoring functions are different we will talk about them in a minute and that are used to score this ligands. So whenever you are uh, starting with the docking or choosing a docking program, there are two things that you have to look for, which are called as mechanics of the docking. The one is called scoring function. That means how the software is going to calculate the scoring or calculate the energy between these two molecules, how it is going to score the binding between these two. So there are various types of uh, functionalities used uh, in older days early docking programs they had some very basic type of scoring like based on shape complementarity and chemical complementarity so for example in this diagram you can see a shape complementarity being implied so what is done in such cases first to find whether there is a possibility of ligand fitting into the binding site the binding site is divided into these circles and the similar circles are used to map the ligands which are there this tells the software about the potential binding of this into this particular thing. Basically, it's like uh, looking for the lock and key mechanism. That's what is happening here. Lock and key mechanism. But this is not enough. There has to be a chemical complementarity as well. Because if there is no chemical complementarity, this will not be able to hold into this binding cavity and will move away from the protein. Then, uh, so in chemical complementarity, essentially we look for, you know, uh, the hydrophobic, hydrophilic complementarity. Uh, is, so because if hydrophobic and hydrophilic atoms are together, they will of course create a, a repulsion and that will not be a good thing. Then hydrogen bond donating atom has to be paired in, in the other molecule by hydrogen bond accepting atom. Similarly, hydrogen bond accepting atom in one molecule is to be paired with the hydrogen bond donating in other molecule. So these set up the chemical complementarity and based on these number of you know matching pairs the score can be given to each of these ligands based on how it is going to bind. So those are also used in some uh, basic docking programs. Some of the algorithms they use knowledge based scoring. 
in which the free energies of different molecular interactions they are derived from some already existing protein ligand complexes so what happens is a multiple protein ligand complexes are downloaded from the pdb database and these complexes are then used to derive some statistical parameters which can fit the interactions into the model so these knowledge based scoring scheme are used by certain uh, algorithms then we have the empirical scoring which is uh, derived by actually counting the number of interactions and their contributions to uh, this so here for example in this uh, we have we can see this empirical scoring function which is used by autodoc vena so this function is actually of autodoc vena which we will be using to demonstrate how to perform the docking calculation so in this there are various terms we have the loss of entropy term during binding then we have the hydrogen bonding interactions we have ionic interactions we have aromatic interactions we have hydrophobic interactions so all these uh, basically are calculated individually and then summed up to give the final delta g so this is basically scoring function used by autodoc vena Autodoc Vena also has another uh, like similar software that we have, which is called Autodoc or Autodoc 4. So we will also discuss the differences between these two because many of you have asked about the differences between these two. So we also have another software which is Autodoc 4, which uses a different function. So in that there is an extra term apart from all this, which belongs to the delta G of solvation. So it also calculates the solvation energy when ligand is bound and ligand is unbound to the protein surface. So that also works very well in most uh, of the systems. Autodoc Vena is much faster and easier to use while Autodoc 4 uh, takes some time to get used to. So we'll discuss these differences going forward between these things. The second aspect of the mechanics of any, score, any uh, docking algorithm is its search algorithm how the molecule is the the algorithm is going to search for all different conformations of the molecule so that is basically taken care of by search algorithm so uh, these algorithms they try to sample maximum possible conformations uh, within the given space as well as different orientations of those conformations to make sure that all of the conformational search space is being covered of course it is not possible to practically cover entire search space because it's literally extremely huge i mean you can say infinite for uh, most practical purposes so these search algorithms are the ones which will decide how and which type of confirmations are being sampled by the software that we are using for molecular docking so there are various types of search algorithms the most simplest is the systematic search in which one by one each confirmation is checked sequentially of course it is a long process and it is fine for rigid body docking but it is very difficult to use for flexible docking that's where the stochastic methods comes into picture these methods of you know different types of optimization these are mathematical optimization uh, methods which are utilized in searching for these confirmations so these op algorithms include monte carlo method or monte carlo algorithm we have simulated annealing we have genetic algorithms and many different types of search algorithms are there autodoc uh, and autodoc vena they use the genetic algorithms in order to fetch or sample most number of confirmations in the given space and the third method is going for molecular dynamic simulations uh, which can also sample different confirmations for you for those who are unaware of molecular dynamic simulation a molecular dynamic simulation is basically a study of uh, multi-atom systems and its behavior in a time dependent manner so over the time how your molecular systems are going to behave that is captured in the molecular dynamics studies so that will talk about if the time permits so just to summarize uh, molecular docking any software that we use or any method that we use for molecular docking essentially has two parts one it's scoring function and one it is search algorithm so scoring functions uh, based on force fields are also very popular force fields are nothing but you know a kind of directories you can say or databases which store the energies of different types of atoms so that will give you an identification about what energies or what interactions are happening so autodoc 4 for example 
uses the force field based scoring function empirical scoring function we have seen already in autodoc vena which counts all these interactions and checks what will be the thing then we have knowledge based in some of the algorithms and also recently the machine learning based algorithms are also gaining popularity they are not yet very popular uh, amongst the general people to use but machine learning based algorithms are coming up new algorithms and hopefully in coming years they will set uh, set up their you know proper validations and use and they can be used further the another part of this any algorithm is the search algorithm wherein you decide uh, to use the algorithm based on how it is going to search so we have techniques like systematic search molecular dynamics based search local shape feature matching or genetic algorithm like optimization techniques and after all, both of these things you will go for docking assessment where you will actually perform the docking after going through all these things after that you will go for enrichment of the docking if possible it is not always uh, like perform but it is good if you refine the docking and finally you will go for your validation of the uh, molecules that you have involved so uh, let's now go for the practical aspect of it and see about the software how it works what it requires so here are a list of some of the softwares available for uh, common protein ligand and protein protein docking so for protein ligand we have many freely available tools we have autodoc autodoc vena so these two are very popular i think i'm sure every one of you may have already heard about these things and we have doc argus lab uh, swiss doc etc each one of them have their own methods of calculating the energies or scoring the poses commercial softwares are also there like icm glide gold flexx molegro which can also perform the docking in certain way now often the question comes like which software to select whether the free softwares are good enough uh, how to choose the best software etc so it depends on a lot of factors but mostly it's not like that free softwares are always not useful they can be very useful in fact uh, the autodoc and autodoc vena there are many types of uh, proteins and ligands have been validated it does not always work of uh, there is of course a trade off that we have to take care of so that is there and it also does not mean that commercial softwares are always very accurate they may be little bit more efficient in performing the sampling and covering more conventional search space but that does not always mean that they are the best so you it basically you have to evaluate this on case by case basis redocking that we will see in some time is one of the way to validate uh, whether your docking is working fine for a particular type of re, like proteins or not so that we have to look for for protein protein docking we have plus pro uh, hex we have hard doc z doc uh, plus pro can also do the protein peptide docking uh, autodoc can also do protein peptide docking we'll see about uh, autodoc a little bit more so these are some of the softwares available apart from that there are many 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 softwares available uh, in the market free as well as commercial to be used for docking but if you look at the publications by number of you know citations autodoc has the highest number of citations through all accepted publications throughout the years so you can see the popularity of this tool and the way they have been accepted autodoc vena was rewritten by the same team which uh, wrote the autodoc algorithm but it uses a completely different set of techniques to approach the docking problem and it's kind of very much automated making it much more fast and uh, easy to use also so these are some of the things so let's uh, discuss about autodoc vena how to use this how to uh, go about using this and then we'll see how to prepare the molecules so autodoc vena is a very efficient freely available software and it's also open source that means you can make some changes depending on your requirement to this algorithm so autodoc vena is the command line based software that means it is not uh, directly accessible through the graphical interfaces and it also comes with the autodoc tools that can be downloaded separately for preparing the molecules for any kind of a docking autodoc vena uses uh, the genetic algorithm or optimization algorithms to sample the search space as efficiently as it can uh, and it is extremely fast algorithm you will see the results very quickly as we will do some demonstrations of this 
when you are setting up an experiment the basic experiment with autodoc vena you basically require three things one you need your process receptor file this basically is the file that you prepare for autodoc vena we will see what kind of preparation steps the ligand file that you have processed already and kept it ready for docking and you need a configuration file this configuration file essentially involves uh, you know what is the name of the receptor file what is the name of the ligand file and a grid box parameters so we'll also discuss this these grid box parameter essentially are the dimensions and size of the box that we draw to define the binding site or uh, they, there is basically the grid calculations are going to happen so just to review docking basically uh, will use two parts the autodoc tools can be used for preparation autodoc tools is not the only way to go about it you can use softwares like chimera to prepare the molecules you can use softwares like pymol to prepare the molecules along with some extensions so preparation can be done in many different softwares and then the actual calculations are done the searching and scoring is going to be done by the vena so vena will uh, take care of searching for the all confirmations and scoring those confirmations for the affinity so this will uh, in the preparation step we will prepare the receptor prepare the ligands and we will uh, generate the grid for the given thing for autodoc vena generating a grid is very easy it's not very difficult for autodoc we have to take into consideration some things but as uh, i'm focusing more on the basics of the docking we will deal with the autodoc vena first and as and when we go forward let's see how we can take uh, into account other things autodoc vena is a very versatile program it can be used in many different ways when you install autodoc vena for the first time it is installed as a command or basically a command based uh, tool in your computer but then it can be used in many different ways it can be used by other graphical interfaces for example chimera so chimera when we prepare the molecules it will send the data back to the whatever we are prepared it will send it to the uh, vena in the background vena will run the calculations and the results given by vena will then be fetched back to the chimera so it makes the process little bit easier for beginners to understand how it works it can be directly called from the command line which is the best way to go about it it's the inherent or the most default way of accessing the vena it gives a lot of control and a lot of flexibility on different parameters of the program we will see all those parameters it can be called from any other program so if you are into you know developing scripts and software for your own usage you can directly integrate uh, vena into your own programs and it can also be integrated with in different softwares so there are some uh, actually uh, there is actually a paper uh, which is titled as thousand and one ways to run autodoc vena for virtual screening so as you can see this is a very versatile program and can be run by many many different ways in order to perform the required calculation we will go through some of the basic ways of doing so so that is a very popular uh, algorithm and used by many in order to do the docking now let's uh, so uh, so far we have just uh, talked about some very basic aspects so there are if there are any questions any doubts just uh, go ahead and uh, shoot them we'll answer them and then we will go ahead okay so now let's move on to the protein preparation so whenever we are going to do the docking let's first take an example of protein ligand docking and as and when we go on to learn more about these techniques we'll also explore some other types so whenever you are preparing your molecules to do uh, for docking there are many things that you have to consider it's not directly like you get your protein from the pdb and run the docking that's uh, usually will not be a good way of doing these things so there are certain steps that we have to follow in order to prepare our molecules before we can run the docking algorithm 
the very first thing is whenever you get any structure from the pdb make sure the protein structure is proper so check the integrity of the pdb file make sure everything that you need is there in the file look if there are any missing residues there are many uh, molecules which are there many structures for which there can be many missing residues so such molecules first have to be modeled in order to have the complete protein structure using the incomplete protein structure may lead to unwanted artifacts in the docking calculations so make sure that the proteins that you are choosing do not have any missing residues if they do have any missing residues then we have to model them by using some kind of modeling we can use prime uh, from strodinger or modeler software itself which is freely available to fill those residues and create the complete protein structure then we have to look for the known or predicted binding sites so if uh, there are some known binding sites which have been described in the literature so this is another very common question uh, which we have that if we don't know the binding site then how to go about it i will discuss that also that how to predict the binding sites by using various set of softwares and how useful they can be in various cases so uh, we look for the known binding sites if they are already there if not then we go and do the prediction of the binding sites that can be performed then once we know about the binding sites and we have noted that down we understand about overall stoichiometry of the protein whether the protein structure is available as a monomeric unit or it is a dimeric or how it is present in the pdb depending on that your uh, processing may vary so in most common cases if your protein is a homodimer for example or homotrimer then usually you will be dealing with only one of the subunits at a time so for docking you can separate out that subunit and only use that for calculation there are some rare cases where the binding site is present at the interface of two monomers in such cases what to do we will talk about that also later then the protein when we download from the pdb it comes along with many different types of uh, molecules in that which are not required for most basic or common types of calculations so for example the structure may contain some ligands which are already there some ions molecule will be there in order to, they might have been used to kind of neutralize the system or stabilize the system during crystallization they can be there there are going to be water molecules which we call as crystal water present around the binding sites or in general for uh, the entire protein so all those things have to be removed and only the protein molecules needs to be kept there are certain types of uh, cofactors may be present along with the protein which are tightly bound to the protein uh, as you can say complex with the protein they can be kept they need a certain treatment in order to process them so they can also be kept and used for with the, with the protein if they are important for the ligand binding so if there are some metal ions which are present in the binding site for example and they may be important for the interactions of the ligands you can keep them but rest of the things that we do not want we need to remove from the protein structure when we download the pdb of course it doesn't come with the hydrogen atoms especially when we have the xrs structure nmr structure will have the uh, hydrogens for example so we have to add hydrogens again that adding hydrogens is a very important step it's not like need to be done haphazardly there are again polar hydrogens there are again protonation states of various uh, charge amino acid that we have to take care of we'll again discuss those also in coming time so uh, that we have to perform and finally for actually calculation of interactions the calculation of charges is very important so how the charge on each of the atom is calculated also plays an important role in your interaction uh, values that we get so there are some common methods used to have these charges you can also use some force fields and many different methods are there for calculating the charges once we calculate these charges then uh, you are almost ready to uh, use your protein for the docking and then you save your uh, molecule in whatever format that is prescribed by the software so in our case uh, our software is autodoc vena which requires the data to be saved in the pdb qt format which is an extension of pdb with charge information that is q and the type uh, of that uh, the autodoc type of that atom that is t so this format in which we will be saving our prepared molecules so after these steps your molecule or protein will be ready to be docked properly and uh, then of course 
you have to go for ligand preparation now uh, many times what happens when you download the protein it comes along with already bound ligand that in fact is the most preferred uh, confirmation because if you are taking the protein which is already bound to some kind of a ligand could be a drug inhibitor or something else so these uh, ligands are called as co-crystallized ligand so of course while docking we are going to remove them but before we remove them they can actually help us a great deal in setting up our experiments so these co-crystallized ligands are the ones which can help us in identifying the binding site because they are already bound there they can act as a kind of positive control for standardizing our experiment so what we can do whenever we are uh, going to start our docking we can do the redocking study that means we can separate the co-crystallized ligand from the protein and ask the software to dock it uh, again so when software does the prediction we can compare the original structure and the prediction of the software to understand how accurately software is able to predict the ligand binding for this particular system uh, it is also used to validate certain docking protocols uh, and most importantly what it gives you is it gives you the protein confirmation which is already in the state of bound that is whatever bound confirmation is so for example uh, if you have without the ligand protein in let's say this confirmation where binding site is not properly uh, visible but when the ligand is bound the protein opens up the binding site and ligand binds to it so when you take this particular structure which is co-crystallized you are already taking the protein confirmation which is in open state that is in the receiving confirmation or receiving mode so it is ready to accept the ligands that you are going to throw at it so these uh, that's why the structures with co-crystallized ligand are very helpful when you do the docking studies uh, in absence of the co-crystallized ligand how can we find the binding site so there are uh, various ways you can basically look for the proteins literature to find out the key residues in the functioning of the protein and then create a particular site of certain size around that there are many softwares which can do the binding site prediction so for the pdb structures we have a uh, cast p which can just you know kind of give you uh, the idea of potential pockets which are present then with autodoc we have the auto ligand or autocyte also, also there in the flexible one which can help us find the potential binding sites in the given surface uh, there are many actually we have uh, some new tools which are coming up i'll show you uh, at the end so those can be used uh, for chimera we have a particular plugin called probis we can be installed in order to find the potential binding site so these kind of servers and softwares can be used in order to find the potential binding sites on the protein surface often you don't just get one but you may get two or three or more binding sites and uh, your job will be to actually perform docking individually on each one of the pocket and see where you get the maximum interactions and minimum energy or the most efficient results you get so that can be done or you can also perform blind docking in a certain way to find where are the possibility for that specific type of ligand to bind so the only difference is in blind docking you are restricting your search only for that particular molecule that you are providing and these binding site prediction softwares and servers they try to predict the generic binding sites which are present on the protein surface so that can help you in getting the binding sites now let uh, now comes the ligand preparation in the ligand preparation again the steps are as follows of course uh, if you have downloaded from some databases like pubchem or some other databases they may not have hydrogens so check that and uh, add the necessary hydrogens to the structure uh, you can choose different rotatable bonds to restrict the flexibility of the molecule uh, make sure that the structure is properly correct in a correct format especially when it is drawn so whenever you have drawn the structure by any chemistry drawing software make sure that it is correct in its bond lengths bond angles uh, the valencies and everything so basically it should be properly optimized structure before we go for that so optimization is basically important in order to prepare your molecules before docking optimization will make sure that molecule is in the most optimized form to dock 
and then uh, most important step is to generate different possible conformers especially uh, you there can be possible tautomers or different stereoisomers and different protonation states which can be there so you have to generate all these conformations for a given ligand so as to make sure of checking all of these states so for example if you are talking about the drug discovery your molecule that you take orally is going to go through various stages in our body first it will go through stomach acid where we have the ph extremely acidic around 2 so that time it will have a different protonation state then uh, in the cell around physiological ph for example around that it will have a different protonation state so you generate the structures of all possible protonation states or the state that corresponds best to whatever system that you are using so if you already know the micro environment of your protein then you can use that information to generate the uh... so these needs to be done while processing or preparing the ligands for any docking once you do this kind of thing you are almost ready and all these conformers and everything you can store it in a prescribed format and then your uh, ligands are also ready for docking and then submit this data to the docking software it will do the rest so essentially just to summarize what is going to happen i will summarize the entire workflow so you have a kind of a pipeline how to go about it what to do at different cases etc so our protein structure that we have taken this will come either from pdb or if you have modeled it a homology model you can use the model uh, soft model protein the charges and everything will be added by the software the binding sets will be defined the ligand will be taken charges will be calculated for that as well uh, the partial charges and then the search will begin where depending on what type of your docking you're doing the docking program will finalize calculations of all poses and finally it will find one pose uh, or basically several poses where it finds the minimum energy and maximum interactions have been uh, found out there so here as you can see in this particular scenario the docking program has found a deep pocket where the molecule can bind tightly and minimize the energy of the system while maximizing the interactions and then further you can do the analysis of these different interactions as we will see after we finish the docking now uh, there have been a lot of steps and a lot of things uh, which are there so just kind of to summarize all these steps that we have seen this is kind of a chart we can use to study how we can prepare all those things so our uh, protein ligand docking especially that starts with uh, understanding the protein now many of you have asked questions about the protein protein docking in protein protein docking also some of these steps are going to be kind of common so in this case the same thing that we use for the protein preparation you will use for both the partners before you submit your molecules for docking so uh, first is finding the re receptor or target or protein whatever you want to call it that structure so download it from the pdb while downloading make sure that it's complete and of good resolution resolution is also very important then preferably in a bound conformation uh, many times you may need to energy minimize the protein in order to make sure that everything is proper and especially the side chain rotations and everything are uh, minimized with respect to the energies then look for the known binding sites if they are already described by the uh, literature or if the pre-bound ligand is present and make sure especially for the amino acids like histidine and uh, glutamic acid all those charge residues the protonation states are correct as per the required ph conditions usually this information is already there in pdb so you don't have to worry about it but in some cases you may have to do this if the structure is not available in pdb for the protein that you want to study the interactions with you can use the homology mod homology modeling as an approach to generate the protein structure in the homology modeling what essentially we do we take a homologous protein structure which is already present and use that as a reference in order to create the protein structure if time permits i will also uh, go through the demonstrations of this that how to do it easily with the help of chimera and modeler together 
once you are done with your protein uh, study the binding sites okay. so binding sites you know it can be the active site that can be used as a binding site there can be some other binding sites for example uh, protein has multiple druggable sites so those can be utilized uh, you can use the pocket finding algorithms to find the potential sites sometimes uh, protein may also have some allosteric sites on its surface which can also be utilized but of course allosteric docking is not as common you may have to integrate with some studies like you know the molecular dynamic simulations and others so that is the allosteric site then you go for your ligand calculation or uh, make sure that your charges are calculated uh, you can use the pka calculation in order to find you know potential uh, distribution or potential protonation states of your ligand molecules and generate those structures then choose the docking program uh, by reviewing some uh, literature uh, if you are looking for protein protein there are some uh, like biannual competitions which are held in order to find out that how the protein protein docking algorithms are uh, like working how much they are accurate and etc so, so those studies can also be utilized while deciding the program to be used or uh, whenever you, just you are going to start your studies make sure uh, you standardize the program verify that it is working fine at least for the system that you are choosing so for that you can use the co-crystallized ligand so this process is called as redocking where we uh, whatever crystal structure already is present we separate them and dock it with the help of any software that is called as redocking it assures you that it is able to predict these kind of confirmations uh, to close to whatever accuracy that it can and then you can go forward finally the software will take care of the scoring it will score different poses and give it to you then you have to rank and select those poses based on their energies and interactions and some more parameters based on that then you can filter your poses and use them then your options are of course many you can use this data of docking for many different purposes you can use it for analysis of various types of interactions which happen you can uh, submit it further for refinement and make sure some, if there are any other local confirmations which behave much better way uh, and then you can report your data to a publication or whatever thesis that you're working on in uh, this is now many uh, much more common in these days that after you do the docking, the docked complexes are subjected to a molecular dynamic simulation study. It improves the reliability of your results multifold because in molecular dynamic simulation, you will do much more detailed analysis of your binding uh, affinity, uh, the tightness, the overall you know, values of different chemical properties. So all those things will be calculated in the molecular dynamic simulation. Then the flexible nature of molecule, especially the conformational changes which are going to happen after the ligand binding in a protein, those can also be captured in the molecular dynamic simulation. So for all these reasons, it is uh, of course a good idea to go ahead and do the MDS for whatever docking you have done. So this kind of a chart will basically help you uh, choose different stages depending on how you're working out with this. There are many different things still uh, can go into uh, each of these steps but it depends on how long you are already in the docking so basically that is kind of an overview of how to do that a basic type of docking we are looking at here now let's talk about why this docking is so important what all things we can do with the help of docking depending on various uh, things or various fields that you all are from where all you can use the docking process so there are many applications of docking you uh, can use the molecular docking of course the main aim is to find the lowest energy structure for the given uh, molecular complex the receptor and ligand you can use docking to search the database of different compounds and rank them for lead generation so lead generation is the process in the drug discovery where you find out the potential drug candidates by going, uh, like running them through the entire pipeline of computer-based drug discovery. So in that again, docking can be used to search the database of various compounds and then to rank them based on the docking scores. Then uh, you can calculate the differential binding of various ligands to multiple uh, receptors. So you can check how the same ligand binds to multiple receptors, whether it has the similar affinity 
whether it has uh, the differential affinity so those things can also be found out with this especially in case of uh, drug designing for example if you want to find out the uh, potential side effects or the way uh, this molecule can also interact with some other important proteins in the body you can use docking against those as well by using the multi receptor docking uh, you can study the geometry of a particular complex, how uh, that bond angles and bond formations are happening. Uh, in the lead optimization process, especially in the drug discovery again, so you can use the docking results to propose modifications based on whatever you see over there. So the docking result can then be used in order to find out what possible modifications can be done to this ligand in order to optimize it for better activity or more interactions, more positive interactions. So again, as you can see, many of these applications relate to the drug discovery because uh, docking is molecular docking is a central tool for the rational or computer aided drug discovery. So that's where this is a very important tool for lead generation. Again, you can use docking. So there are uh, new different programs which are coming, which are of course little bit advanced, which do uh, use the de novo process. So for example, if you already have the ca cavity. So by studying the binding cavity, these softwares will try to create a ligand which will fit into this particular binding pocket. For such cases, it can be used for your library uh, screening. You can use this virtual screening basically. So a lot of things can be done with the help of docking. Checking the specificity of various uh, drugs against different targets. You can use for protein-protein interaction predictions if you do the protein-protein docking. So all these things can be utilized for uh, by, with the help of docking. Then you can uh, one of the common ways in the drug discovery is to you know find the natural product. So if you have some natural products and you want to test their efficacy, you can uh, test basically all those structures against potential targets and then check their affinity for that. If you have a sample and uh, you have a lot of compounds in that, you don't know what potential is the active component against a target. You can dock all of those components before you go for experimentation essentially a uh, docking helps you reduce the time and cost which goes into setting up actual biological screening docking is not entirely accurate always but it gives you a certain direction in which you can proceed further and use this information for uh, calculating all those things so these are basically the uses of different dockings uh, in virtual high throughput screening, especially in the drug designing again, because when you go uh, to the drug designing, you usually start with millions of molecules. Your drug discovery project may start with 1 million molecule, for example, and you will have to test them against a the target. Of course, it is not uh, feasible for anybody to actually synthesize those all 1 million compounds, set up the biological screening assays for all those, and then uh, study their activity against the target. But rather, if you already screen the compounds based on docking, you have a very limited time, limited number of compounds which you can actually synthesize and validate those results in the laboratory. So it gives you kind of a direction and reduces the uh, cost before you actually set up any kind of experiment. So first you can investigate these interactions to computational means and then you can go ahead and set up your further experiments. It can give you a lot of insights into various phenomena Docking can also be utilized. Uh, I don't know whether I have uh, mentioned this here, but in the process of studying mutation. So how does the mutation uh, changes certain proteins function? What effect it will have to again study that we can uh, check the mutated protein and dock molecules against that and also with the normal normal protein and compare the results or uh, energy that we get. So all those things can be done with the help of docking. So there are lots of applications for anybody who is from uh, the either biological site or even from chemical site to test their compounds or to study their proteins that they are investigating uh, and set up a hypothesis based on these results for your further projects. So those are some of the applications of molecular docking in different life sciences stream. Now, uh, before we go on with the demonstration and preparation of all these systems, uh, very quickly, I will review some of the tips and some post docking analysis that you can do. And then we will actually see how to perform these things in the most simplest manner. I'm keeping this very simple for because we have a lot of beginners in this particular session. But definitely I will keep on uh, some advanced sessions also going forward because many of you are already in the process of doing some advanced docking. So we will also learn that. 
So there are few things that you have to consider when you do the molecular docking. First, make sure that the molecule that you have chosen, do, which is of really good quality. There are many ways to you know check for the quality. There are some uh, standard structure validation parameters. There is a Ramchandran plot we can which can help you very quickly you know assess the quality of the protein structure. Make sure that it is of good resolution. There are no missing parts, and also make sure that there are no mutations unless it is explicitly required by your process. Then uh, make sure that the structure is complete and protein that you are looking for is completely there. Sometimes the partial protein structures may be available which uh, have to be taken with some consideration. If it is a domain, a entire domain, you can take it. But if it is somewhere in between, it's a problematic to take them. See if the whole structure is available. That is the structure in bound form. Some kind of a ligand is already present. That will help you as I told you in many ways. You can use the bound ligand to identify the active site. If it is not there, then we have softwares where we can, they can help us. Uh, before you go ahead and use these studies, you standardize the experiment because these algorithms have many different parameters. So you have to tweak those parameters in order to make sure that it is working for you. So when you are validating the software and you are doing the redocking experiment, you see that it is not able to predict uh, correctly the normal state of the co-crystallized ligand. It doesn't mean that it is not working, but it may need some parameterization. So you can optimize those parameters by tweaking them a little bit and see whether it improves the quality of the docking. This is a very common thing that you can do. So for example, in Autodoc Vena, you can change the exhaustiveness, that is how exhaustively it needs to sample the confirmations and see whether it improves. In Autodoc, you can increase the number of uh, genetic algorithm runs that it is going to perform so it may improve uh, the sampling. So these are the things you try out, make sure that it is working and then you go ahead with those parameters for your rest of the molecules that you want to study. If there is no ligand, uh, the bound form is available and you have to standardize the experiment with some references, you can use some any other ligand or even the natural substrate of the enzyme uh, if it is a small molecular ligand just to see whether it gives a positive score with the help of docking or not because here always you may not have the reference value so you just check whether it gives some acceptable possible score or not with the help of this so that will give you an idea whether it is working it can basically use work as a positive control so that can be used in order to standardize the Okay, so before going ahead, I'm going to take uh, some questions now that I have here and we'll see. Okay. I will address all these questions just uh, very uh, at the end so we can have a kind of complete session and then we can have this. So now we are going to learn about Autodoc, Autodoc, Vena, what are the differences, how to set them up, how to install them, etc. So all those things we will see now in a minute. So this slide will come back to later when we learn about these things. There are few other tips that you have to remember that whenever you are running an experiment, Make sure that you're running in replicates. Don't just go ahead with first try and report those. Make sure that the results are reproducible. They are almost similar every time you're running that. So it will ensure the consistency in your results. Uh, baseline score can be taken from co-crystallized ligands just in order to filter the compounds if you're doing the virtual screening, etc. Now, uh, okay. Let me see some questions. Okay. 
I think it's better we keep questions for the last because there are so many. So we'll go through them uh, nicely one by one and we can work around with them. Okay, so there are a few more things that you have to remember before you actually start using the softwares. So you have to learn about your protein. As I told you earlier, you have to know about your protein enough to start this docking processes. You have to know what's happening. Uh, what kind of confirmation it is present in, whether it is a, a multimeric protein, whether it is a homomultimeric or heteromultimeric. So a lot of things can be there. What a lot of possibilities can be there for your protein. Now, how to do in such cases when you have all these things? So if you have a protein which is homomultimer, in most common cases, the binding site is going to be on just one of the chains. So you can just separate the chains uh, from each other and take one of the chains into account for your processing and docking. There can be a possibility when you don't know about the binding site and the binding site may be present at the interface of those two monomers. So in such cases, what to do if you don't know the binding site also, there are certain things that we can do, I'll tell you. Similarly for heteromultimers, if you already know that which subunit is your binding partner or target, you can separate that out and use it for docking. If you don't have an idea about it, you can use it for all. So how to find such cases uh, that very quickly we'll see and let's go to the quickly practical. Okay. So if it is a homo multimer, let's say homo dimer. So we have a two subunits which are identical to each other. So there is a possibility that the binding set may be at the interface for certain ligand. So how do we sure about it? So what you can do is you can uh, check the docking with this separately, this subunit separately and keeping them together in one complex. And then you can compare these values. So if you see the best value and the best pose at this location, there is a probability, a uh, high chance that it is over here. That way you can find out. Similarly for heteromultimers, if you don't know that which partner is the binding partner, you can uh, do the docking with individual, this and this, then both together also to see if it is at the interface. And you will see the differential binding and you can uh, kind of get an idea that which possibly is the binding partner. So all those things can be done uh, as per your requirement. It is case by case basis. We'll take some of those examples. Avoid using any interface residues. So if you already know that these residues are at the interface of these uh, partners, then avoid using them if uh, it is not intended to be. If your intention is to actually break the association, you can use those residues. That's not a problem. So that can be done. During the analysis part, you can do many different things. Docking simulations are nothing but a prediction of your binding affinities. They are not going to be very close to the real ones always. There is of course a very high uh, error rate that can come. So after docking is complete, you can do variety of processing to improve your docking uh, results and get better in the analysis. So you can refine the docking to allow for the narrow local search and the confirmational search space. You can study all kinds of interactions between two. There are various softwares like Chimera, Discovery Studio, which will be studying PyMol, Likplot. Our, uh, Likplot is also present in PDB Sum. We'll see all these examples and how to actually see those interactions. You can go for molecular dynamics simulations. It's always a good idea, as I told you. The refinement using MDS can lead to very good results. MDS can also help you actually calculate the real binding affinity by uh, the binding free energy also it can help you calculate which will be the close to real value so that can be done with mds there are multiple assays which can be set up based on your results and uh, hit optimization is the process in drug discovery where you can use this result to improve the natural ligands that are present in the molecule in order to improve their efficacy or potency or decrease their side effects so whatever lacking or whatever missing part is there that can be studied with the help of docking you can study the cross reactivity but again that's specific to the drug discovery so i'm not going to uh, go into that right away but most importantly always correlate and validate with the experimental data Computation alone is never sufficient. All the studies we do in bioinformatics on computers are based on certain models which are derived from existing data. So they may not be always applicable for every possible system on uh, this place. So make sure that it is correlating with some experimental data or make some validation should be done before you publish those results somewhere. 
so that how you can go ahead and do that but molecular docking surely will save you a lot of time a lot of uh, efforts before you set up your final thing so for example if you're going for mutating your protein for certain uh, acids certain things then which uh, molecules to or which amino acids to mutate how to mutate to them so that can also come from the docking studies you will know what are the binding amino acids and which you can take into consideration so many things can be done with the help of this docking so uh, with this now uh, the theoretical part is ending i will answer a lot of questions that we have now and then we will go for the demonstrations of these techniques okay so let's uh, take some questions uh, before we go ahead and do the demonstrations of these techniques uh, for technical part the recording will be available on the same link it will get processed uh, in some time after it is over so you can get uh, to that how to calculate the ki value that is inhibition constant so ki value directly cannot be calculated but uh, the autodoc that we do docking using autodoc it also gives you along with the binding affinity it also calculates the ki that is inhibition constant for you and gives you there are some methods algorithms available so you can use the autodoc for or new versions in order to calculate the ki values uh what is the difference between allosteric and cryptic sites allosteric sites are normal binding sites only thing that they are present away from the active site they are somewhere else on the protein surface while cryptic binding sites are usually not directly seen they may be buried somewhere or they may be hidden by some other part of the protein but only when the ligand comes and it approaches the protein they open up and expose and then the binding happens how to measure whether the interaction is good or not yes we will come to that in uh, this particular demonstration session very soon can docking be applied for more than two molecules also to see their interaction if there are small molecules you can perform that but usually the scoring functions are optimized for biomolecular structures so you may not be able to get good information out of that for that we have other bio uh, like molecular modeling tools which can be utilized for that i'm just answering some of the questions uh, very quickly before we go for this how can i get the low binding energy for protein ligand binding process well that is the job of the molecular docking as we will see after the docking is finished the output that we get that will be in the form of binding affinity or the binding energy as we will see how to identify allosteric site and cryptic sites in homology modeling created protein model yes there are many tools like uh, i told you the probes or auto ligand or auto site which come along with the auto doc they can be used to predict the binding sites in any protein molecule not just pdb downloaded from pdb but even if you are model you will be able to do that now there are many questions pertaining to the lipinski's rule of 5 adamt which is all parts of the drug discovery so what i'll do is right now i'm not going to answer but i will take up a small session on uh, the drug discovery as well where you can learn all those things
how to dock uh, ruthenium and osmium based metal complexes with proteins or dna and auto dock so for metal complexes it's a very complex uh, calculation you have to actually uh, parameterize your metal ions first by using some force field you have to develop maybe if that is not available you have to develop a force field parameters for those ions and then you can integrate them in your autodoc calculation through some basic scripts that they provide how can we understand if there is any missing residue i will show that practically uh, can nanoparticles be docked? Yes, again, just like metal ions, you can dock the nanoparticles by first, but the comp the process is a little complex because you have to parameterize it first, get its uh, force field parameters because they may not be readily available for all kinds of nanoparticles. So you may have to generate that on your own and then you can do this. Uh, what happens when a ligand only binds to multimeric form of the protein still need to be selected one chain no if it is binding to the complex as it is at the interface you can keep that complex structure as it is without separating it kindly explain how to optimize the ligands yes i will come to that point in a practical process when we do homology modeling so for this question it's simple whenever you don't have the structure available for your own protein in pdb but there is another protein structure from a homologous group or maybe a homologous protein available from a maybe closely related organism or it could be an isoform of the protein which is very similar so that is available that time you can use homology modeling other than vacuum hydrated docking types is there any docking system in which we can check interactions according to environment so that is usually not a docking it is not as called as docking so that system is called as molecular dynamic simulation so in molecular dynamic simulation we basically create a box or kind of a virtual container in which we put our protein we put our ligand we put our ions there are a lot of water molecule around aqueous environment or any solvent that you can put and then you allow the system to go uh, for you know normal it's time dependent behavior under various conditions so that is called as mds but uh, there is no such docking for that do we use softwares to optimize ligands like avogadro yes avogadro can definitely be used for optimizing but uh, i'll show you some more tools for that okay i think there are lots of questions actually uh, okay i'll just you know. okay so all the technical part software now we'll let's come to that we'll start using autodoc uh, vena now and see how to get it how to learn install it all those things so now let's shift to the presentation part the demonstrations of these softwares okay first just kind of an introduction to these uh, tools that we are using the autodoc and autodoc vena both are the tools which are developed at the Scripps Research Institute. So earlier uh, they were developed in the molecular graphics laboratory, but now that laboratory has been converted into a big center for computational structural biology. So these softwares are available on their web website that is Center for Computational Structural Biology at the Scripps Research Institute. To download and install these softwares for your projects, you can just go to this projects and under which you will find docking. All these softwares are freely available and you can use them for your research and other works and cite them accordingly. So this complete autodoc suit is available in many different versions in many different formats depending on what your requirements are. So when you download these different softwares, it comes with various things. The main autodoc algorithm is right here. That is autodoc 4. So this is the link from where you can download autodoc 4. All these softwares except auto uh, doc crank prep, I will explain about it. All are available for Windows, Linux, as well as uh, the Mac system. But auto doc crank prep is only available for Linux and uh, Mac. It is not available for Windows. So auto doc 4 is the main uh, algorithm which runs the auto doc 4 if you are going for that. So you can just go through this link and download it. This is the link for Autodoc Vena from where you can get your Autodoc Vena downloaded. It's a very small, simple file. You can simply download and install it. Again, it is available for all systems, Windows, Linux, as well as Mac. It also has the source. If you are interested in programming and making it much better, 
you can definitely use the source and uh, change that. It also has the Autodoc FR, which is a component for flexible receptor docking. So this Autodoc FR software can help you do the side chain rotations as well as induce fit model. That is Autodoc FR. We will not go through all these software, just some of them will go. Then the Autodoc crank pep is basically the peptide docking software. So this allows you to do the peptide docking with the proteins. Then Autodoc tools is the tool which can uh, help you in pro processing or preparing your molecules for docking. So before docking, you have to do lots of preparations. So Autodoc tools is one uh, software, but just for simplicity and ease of understanding, we are going to use Chimera, which is much simpler than Autodoc tools. But as and when you step uh, forward into this field, you can use this different tools. It also comes with Raccoon 2, which is the virtual screening tool. So if you have thousands of ligands at one time, you can use the Raccoon 2 tool. But currently that is available only for compute clusters and not for individual computers. So it will be difficult to use, but I'll show you a trick to how to automate your ligands. Then you have the binding site prediction tools which come along with the suit. One is AutoSuit, which is a part of Autodoc FR, that is flexible receptor docking, and AutoLigand, which is a part of normal Autodoc without flexible receptor docking. So these are all the tools available at their website, all of you which you can easily download and get to that. Along with that, it also has some really good tools for hydrated docking, that is the sol solvated docking, that is along with the water molecules. They have some force fields for some common, common uh, ions like zinc ion, which we can use for metal binding and all those studies. So what we are going to do is first, I will show you how the Autodoc Vena works. And uh, then we will integrate that along with Chimera to do the quick processing and docking. So Autodoc Vena, when you install in your computer, it get installed as a command line software. So you can go to any command, uh, any terminal. Uh, your command prompt or if you are using Linux, you can go to bash or if you are using Mac, you can go to terminal and it will get installed as a command line program. So for those who are uh, not completely familiar with command line programs, I'm going to give you a simpler option. But just to show you the original version of Vina, how does it work? I'm going to show how does it work. So Vina uses a command line interface in order to run the calculation. Processing is a different part. We'll see about that. But to run Vina, you have to use the command Vina. So these are different parameters of Vina that it requires. It requires the receptor file. It requires the ligand file. If you are doing the flexible docking, it requires the flexible uh, residues or side chains. So that can be easily set up with the help of Autodoc tools. Then it requires the grid parameters, the search uh, like uh, coordinates and the dimensions and etc. And uh, some basic things about algorithm. But along with that, if you use the uh, command line version, you also get access to some very advanced parameters. So for getting that, you can just uh, just to see the parameters, we can type the command Vina uh, help advanced. And you will see that a lot of parameters are there. In fact, we can control the entire scoring function. So the scoring function has different terms as we have seen in this uh, slide that it has the repulsion term, it has the hydrophobic term, it has hydrogen uh, bond term, it has rotational degrees of freedom term. So you can uh, tweak these parameters a little bit just to kind of boost a one particular type of interaction to get better results. So if you know that your protein has ligand binding through uh, majorly hydrophobic interactions, for example, so you can boost that particular uh, coefficient of that parameter and change it and see whether it improves your docking or not. Basically, this is for calculation of the scores. So these scoring function uh, parameters are available in the advanced things. Usually these advanced functions you don't get access when you use the Vina through some other uh, apps which integrate Vina generally. So these are the things that Vina requires. Now I'm going to show you how to use Vina simply with the help of Chimera and also we will move ahead with another example and do it with the help of uh, Autodoc tools also. So these two things we will learn and then finally we will learn about the analysis. So uh, we are going to shoot I think a little bit beyond what we had expected maybe half an hour more. So I hope that is uh, fine for everyone. Anyways. 
So now in this particular Chimera, when you open, again Chimera is a freely available molecular visualization tool developed at UCSF and it uh, has a very lot of good features in order to do any kind of molecular visualization. You can download the Chimera from this uh, download page. You have options for uh, Windows, Mac as well as Linux. And when you open for the first time, this is what you will see uh, the Chimera in the blank screen basically because we don't have anything in yet. It is an extensible molecular modeling system built for many, many different types of operations, right from visualization to processing to basic analysis to performing docking by using Autodoc Vena. So these are the things we'll see. So just very first basic docking we'll do with some simple protein. What I'll do is I'll load a protein that I have, which is downloaded from a PDB. I think it's an MDM protein. So let's open. Okay, I'll directly get it from PDB. Okay, so here I have a small protein MDM which is co crystallized to a ligand. I, I, right now, I'm not going to go through all this, you know, uh, process of actually going to PDB and searching. I'm hoping that you all are aware of searching the PDB and everything. So, this PDB structure comes with various things. It has uh, this ligand, as you can very clearly see. If there is any missing part of the protein, it is immediately shown here. So somebody asked me how to find if there is any missing part. So whether you are on PDB, I'll give you another example. For example, okay, so let's download one protein. So when you, you see such kind of thing, here you can immediately see that these are dotted lines which are shown. So these dotted lines basically mean that there is a missing part of the structure uh, which is not available as a coordinates. So the reason for this is most of the times is because of the high flexibility of these uh, loops. These are flexible loops which do not have any particular secondary structure. So they are not properly captured during the X-ray uh, diffraction process and thus they are not read by the computer properly. So uh, it's not able, the computer is not able to fit the atoms at these locations. So that's why they are missing. So you need to model them. It's very simple to model them uh, within the camera itself or using the modeler also but that let's keep it for later so what i'll do now is very simply i will first uh, separate these ligand from the protein and i'll show you by doing the redocking how the docking actually works and whether it works very well or not so what i'll do is by using chimera i'm going to select this i'm going to save it separately we can uh, directly run a command split ligand and it will separate out but just because I need it later to compare, I'm going to save this as uh, my ligand PDB file, save. Now this ligand is the one which is going to give us idea about the potential binding set. This is where we are going to do docking. We will start with the most basic docking that is the uh, flexible ligand and the rigid protein docking. Then once we are done with this, we will simply process now how do we start preparing the molecules for docking it's actually very simple so you can I'll, I'll first delete this from the protein so it's not present anymore and open is at a separate molecule okay now these two are separate molecules they don't know the positions of each other so we can dock them now to prepare these molecules you can even you know add more molecules if you want i'm gonna add one more random drug i have maybe let's say these are not actually let's compare anyways so that is also open now now what we're gonna do is first we will see how to process this. it's very simple you go to the tools menu under which you have a lot of different options again i don't have time to explain the entire chimera how to use it it's very simple and intuitive so it should be uh, easy to learn so in the tools you have the surface or binding analysis that in which you have a lot of options one uh, tool that is dock prep as the name suggests it is the tool which is used for preparation of molecules for docking so this is the simple tool for preparing molecules simply click on that it will open up different steps of processing so as you remember, you we have talked about various stages. Here I'm talking a very simple small protein, so we don't have any multiple chains or anything like. But we are gonna remove some part that we don't want. So in this option, you will see preparatory steps like whether do you want to delete the solvent molecules, 
do you want to delete the non complex ions you can delete them uh, this is for alternate locations for some modified amino acids if there are incomplete side chains do you want to fill them or complete them sometimes what happens in proteins the amino acid is there but the side chain is missing or some atoms of the side chains are missing so those also need to be completed for that you can use this incomplete side chains options by using some rotamer libraries then do you want to add hydrogens yes that is the required step if you already have added the hydrogens by some other means then you can skip this option then do you want to add charges yes we will need that so you have to select this if you have calculated the charges by any other charge calculation software then you can skip this charge calculation step and uh, it asks whether you want to save the files into the intermediate step let's keep it simple and let's just say okay now it will start processing the first step it will ask for is add hydrogens for docking so in this process we are going to add the hydrogens so here it asks us which method to use whether you want to use only the steric hydrogens or consider h bonds also the steric hydrogens means it will very simply uh, add the hydrogens for every atom where there is a uh, like valency and it will just make sure that there are no steric hindrances between the hydrogens added to uh, nearby atoms but when you choose this option the also consider h bond it will also make sure that the hydrogen bond network is optimized in the protein based on the added hydrogens so it's better of course to use that because naturally that is what happens uh, automatically the hydrogen bond network is going to get uh, optimized in these systems then as i told you for many uh, amino acids especially histidine glutamic acid aspartic acid lysine and cysteine for these the protonation states can be very different and you have to make sure that they are correct when you are downloading from pdb in most common cases this information will be already embedded but when you create a model of the protein you may have to manually select that how do you want to uh, process the protonation of those things so for example histidine has multiple protonation sites uh, we have the histidine histidine delta protonated epsilon protonated etc so and both protonated so based on the name nomenclature in the pdb of the residue it will automatically process that information if you want to manually select it you can do that also but for this simple very first docking i'm going to keep things very simple so let's just say okay with the default parameters now as you can see it has quickly added the hydrogens for all those things for ligand as well as for the protein then it will ask to assign charges for the preparation so for protein it's uh, easy to get the charges because we already have a lot of nice force fields force fields as i told you are nothing but uh, some databases or some files in which they define the energies in contributed by different types of atoms and their combinations so for example uh, if there is a sp3 hybridized carbon connected to the sp2 hybridized carbon then what will be the energy all such things so every so for amino acids the standard energies are already present in these databases so that will be taken from there so currently in chimera you have these uh, amber databases which available but if you want to like uh, apply some other kinds of force fields like gromax or lamps or uh, charm you can do that separately and skip the charge collection calculation step for non protein part you need some kind of a method to calculate the charges on them so in chimera you have two methods one is gastiger charges and one is am1 bcc charges they have a little different methodology of calculating the partial charges again let's not worry about it for first docking let's keep it default it works best the gastiger charges are very good even the auto dock uh, tools recommend that you use the gastiger charges for calculation so let's keep it that way and okay it will confirm the charges on different uh, uh, molecules or different residues that you have so uh, this the current new added ligand that we had it has a zero charge the ligand which is here this blue one has minus 1 and the sulfate ion which is there it has the minus 2 charge you can delete the sulfate ion also it's uh, just kept it anyways but you can delete that and just say okay now oh okay uh okay there has been some error for one of the residues oh all right so the gastiger charge parameter is not available for one of the molecule one of the ligand so what i'll do is i will use the a1 bcc charges that is fine okay
so now this uh, amber parameterization the amber uh, preparation tools or amber tools as it is called it will prepare these molecules add the charges calculate because it's a complex process to calculate partial charge for every atom and once it is done we can save these things into files and finally run very easily to vena So this is I'm telling you about just the protein part and how it works and everything. Then we'll all okay. I think uh, there is some. Uh, anyways, let's skip that error. So now our uh, charges and everything has been calculated. The software is asking us to save the prepared files. So we can simply save them. I'm giving the simple name as processed and let's just save this. So now our these molecules are ready to be docked uh, against each other. To perform the docking with Vena, it's very simple. I'm showing the simplest option. So to use it, go to tools, surface or binding analysis and use this tool called Autodock Vena. So what this does, it is basically an interface to Autodoc Vena, which will run the Autodoc Vena in the background and will give you the result. So finally, after this Vena is run, the result will be the binding affinities of these molecules for this particular target. In this Autodoc Vena, there are a few things we have to fill. First, where do you want to save the output files? You can choose the folder where you want to keep them and name it accordingly. Then you have to select the receptor molecule, ours is 3LBK. Then you have to select the ligand molecule, K23. And now here is where the grid information is important. So let me first uh, kind of tell you about, you know, what grid is, why we need to create a grid. Because grid in uh, Autodoc Vena is very simple, but in Autodoc, it can take uh, some use to in calculating. So grid basically how these algorithms work is, because the calculations are huge, whatever atoms are there within the grid, they calculate the interactions of different types of common atoms which are present in these uh, ligand. They, these are pre-calculations. They already calculate the type of interaction each atom can make with the protein in the grid box. So those values are already stored. So whenever the conformational search space is going on, the grid will help directly associate those values to whatever conformation is being processed. So for example, in the uh, first grid point, the value for carbon is say some x. So next time when there is a carbon in that grid while the conformational search space, the value will be already available. So it doesn't have to calculate again. That's why grid values or grid parameterization can uh, greatly improve the efficiency or speed of the process of docking. So for Autodoc Vena is very simple. So what we do here is we don't have to create any extra files. So we just have to click on this resize search volume using whatever button you are comfortable with. I usually go with the control button one. So here you can just draw a box. So let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah. So what we do is by using the control button and mouse, you can draw this box. The aim of the grid box is to define uh, the potentially important amino acids that we call as binding set also. So here we already know the ligand binding uh, already of that one ligand. So we can create a box good enough for that ligand to fit completely and not unnecessarily big enough to increase the number of calculations. So ideally the recommended box size is around, you know, uh, 20, 20, 20, that is 20 angstrom in each direction. So this grid box, as you can see, it contains this particular ligand inside it will define the calculations of these binding site residues 
which are important. After this stage is completed, I'm going to hide that residue for now. Okay. So after this step is completed, what you do is simply these values will be automatically filled for grid box. So these values corresponds to the center coordinates of the box with respect to the protein and size corresponds to the X, Y, Z size in the dimension. So what are the dimensions in across the X, Y and Z uh, dimensions? That's what it tells us the size. So this size is currently in angstroms for orthodox vena. For autodoc, it can be different. In autodoc, we select what should be the distance between each point and everything. So that's a different process. So after this, the one there are a few more things like receptor options, which we already have done, ligand options we already have done. Finally, there is, are some advanced options that you can play around with, like uh, how many number of binding modes you want. So uh, by default, it will give you the top 10. But if you want to change that, you can change also executable location where you tell the chimera where your autodoc vena is installed. This is just one type, one time step. Once you do that, chimera is always remember. So I, uh, by default, your uh, vena is stored in your C drive program files in which you have the scripts research institute folder in which you will have this vena installed. So here you will find that. So you just have to point your chimera to that just once and it will remember after that all you have to do is just click apply or oh okay okay i did some mistake while preparation i'm sorry about that i'll quickly rectify that So just give me one minute, I'll very quickly uh, save all these things. So I, earlier while saving this molecule, I saved the entire protein rather than saving just the ligand molecule. That's why the error came. So let's save this K23. Let's uh, delete this from the protein. So protein doesn't know each that. Open the K23 residue and then quickly prepare them for docking. Preparing is very easy. Select these options as per your requirement. Make sure that you are adding the hydrogens, which are hydrogen bond optimized and the protonation states are correct. Select the appropriate charges. Make sure the charges are correct and then just say OK. Your processed files will be saved. And you can go ahead to Autodoc Vena. In this, you can select where you want to save your data. That is final results. You can select your receptor, you can select your ligand, make this box. So this box is just basically a way of telling the software that which residues are important in this particular protein. So if you don't know about binding set, you can use this box around entire protein. So you can basically create a box for blind docking just to find out the potential. That is not always the right way to go about it because you already have the binding set prediction software. So here you have all these things. So now we have this box, we are ready and simply apply. So it will very quickly start the docking uh, process and it will finish within, you know, uh, just a minute, or even less than a minute actually, it depends on flexibility of the ligand, how flexible ligand is, etc. So Autodoc Vena is extremely easy to use. It has been uh, most of the things that we had to do earlier in Autodoc manually. They are now automated in Autodoc Vena. So for beginners, it's a good tool to go around and explore a little bit more. And once you are familiar with all these terminologies, the results and interactions and analysis, you can go ahead with Autodoc and some other advanced tools for molecular docking. I will surely take another session on advanced docking also because this is just an introductory part that we are learning here. So it is running now and it will be finished any second now. Okay. 
So as you can see, the docking process is now complete and here you have the affinity that is the binding energy between your molecule and your things. So very quickly, let's uh, run through this models that we have. So what Veena has done, Veena has predicted the top uh, 10 poses that it has uh, from all the poses and ranked them based on their binding affinity. The values that you get here are in the units of kilocalories per mole. So for the first pose that it has found, the binding energy of this molecule or this particular pose to the protein is minus 9.1 kilocalories per mole. Then for second pose, it is minus 8.6. For third pose, as you can see, the confirmations of each pose are very different from each other. So it has sampled lots of confirmations and scored each of the confirmations based on the energy and given is as an output. So usually the first confirmation that is the minimum energy confirmation is the one that you will be looking for. So you just have to select that. Now let's visually also see how does it look. So as you can see, the blue one is the original pose. It was the co-crystallized ligand and the green one is the predicted pose. So as you can see, it's quite close. It's not exactly 100% accurate, but it's quite close to the pose it was given by the software. So you can see very close prediction and very nicely it has uh, done this prediction. That means that this software is having some accuracy. You can also try with some more ligands and see how this do work. Now, this is the output that you get from Veena. You basically get the receptor structure which is prepared and you get the pose, different top time poses of your dock complex or dock molecule. Now, how to interpret this? What is the significance of these values? So, these values are the ones which will tell you about how good your docking has been. Uh, ideally, when you're looking for drug-like molecules, you're looking for a very good activity, normally in the range, you know, nanomolar range. You don't have to you don't want to really go for micromolar range that will be a lot of molecules so if uh, you consider the activity of uh, i think one nanomolar for example uh, it corresponds to the affinity of around minus 10 kilocalories per mole it's a rough correspondence it is not exact formula so you can see that it has a very good affinity that is minus 9.1 kilocalories per mole uh, well, now there is a lot of things about this that you have to understand that what are these energies, how do we interpret them, etc. So when you are doing usually the drug discovery studies or screening, the accepted or kind of, you know, conventional value of selection is minus 7.5. So all those poses, all those compounds which have uh, energies better than minus 7.5, you accept into your uh, process and you uh, discard the ones which have very high energies. So we don't want high energies like minus 6.5 or minus 5.5. That is not going to be a good binder or you will need a lot of that material to be put into the system to actually work. So it depends on what is the goal of your uh, project, whether you're looking for drug or just some laboratory agents or just some testing. So that way you can interpret. For each of the molecule that you dock, you just have to select the top one or two poses. Usually even the top one works in autodoc Vena. In uh, autodoc, you may have to select multiple poses before you go ahead and do further ranking. So autodoc Vena directly gives you this ranking for a given molecule and then you are all set to explore it further and do you know interaction analysis and everything. Okay, so this is how you can perform easily docking and get the results right into the chimera. For beginners, this is a very easy process because you don't have to do much. You just load your protein, you just load your molecule and uh, then you do the dock prep and perform the docking. Now, this is the most basic level just to give you an idea of what we get out of the docking. Uh, ideally, you will go through multiple steps. So, for example, one of the steps, as I told you, will be to generate multiple confirmers or multiple stereoisomers of the molecule or optimize the molecule for example so how do we really do that optimization that also i will show you now in this table you have multiple things you have the score that is uh, affinity binding affinity in kilocalories per mole rmsd lower bound and rmsd upper bound these are basically just kind of reference parameters just to see how much deviated your overall poses are so for the first, these are values with reference to the minimum energy pose. That is the first pose. That's why for the first pose, these values are zero. 
for second pose that is how deviating or different it is from the first pose so the lowest uh, lower bound rmsd that is the minimum rmsd between these is 2.36 and uh, the maximum that is upper bound of the rmsd considering all the atoms is 5.056 so it just tells you that how far your molecules are kind of you know uh, distributed in the conformational search space that's what it tells you but you just have to look for the score that is uh, values of binding affinity you have to look for now that we have we have to save this properly process it properly so we have a very nice complex ready to be studied for interactions between the protein and the ligand that's most important so very quickly i will run you through how to see these interactions in chimera as well as discovery studio as well as uh, pdb sum which is a very good for uh, plots so let's go ahead and do this very quickly in chimera it has some basic options to calculate the hydrogen bonds as well as to calculate this different types of uh, non bonded interactions without specifying specifying what they are so first let's process the structures properly because right now we have too many stuff we have the receptor molecule we have the uh, earlier ligand which we don't want we have the predicted ligand pose, poses that to not just one but we have many of them so how to save only the required part that we will see so what we'll do now we'll go to file save pdb these options are common to any software you use you use pymol you use uh, discovery studio you can save whatever part you want now in this you will see all the models currently in the work work window so first we need the receptor so we we'll, let's keep click on that and second these are all docked poses as you can see from the name itself you know that these are the docked poses and they are uh, named or numbered as per their energies so the first one is going to be the minimum energy so you also select that so make sure that your protein and the ligand uh, that is the first pose only these two things are selected so when you save this pdb file you have a very nice complex of only the selected pose and your receptor with, without any other things so i'm going to save this as a complex and simply save it so after you save it then we can close all these things before we go for now it becomes easy to do any kind of you know interaction analysis and everything so let's open the complex now you will see you, we only have the protein and the predicted binding pose we don't have anything else so how do you see that whether it makes the hydrogen bonds with the protein or not so for that we just have to select this particular residue and go to tools again let's go to surface binding analysis and find h bond so that will it will find the hydrogen bond interactions so here you can uh, make all these parameters just read about uh, their names you will understand what they are like what they are trying to calculate we only want just with this molecule so we let's click on this only find h bond with at least one end selected so we don't want the hydrogen bonds within the protein they are of course going to be there and then simply click on the apply so it says it has found zero hydrogen bonds that means it is not making any hydrogen bonds with the protein let's see if other type of inter interactions are there or not just below the hydrogen bond you have other types of contacts that we can find out so again the same kind of options are there you but uh, the good thing is you can also find the negative contacts which are clashes and positive contacts which are just contacts so let's first see the positive contacts and uh, okay uh, we have to get it oh I have to select the protein also, but anyways, and for clashes, let's okay. So it's not finding any contact for this pair. It's okay. So now we have this. We can submit it to the better softwares, which can do a good uh, interaction analysis. One of the very good software for that is uh, Discovery Studio. So very quickly, I will go through that, and then I will show you how to generate ligand poses, and then I think we can stop for that. And then we can get all the questions that we can. So if you want to do all these calculations, Discovery Studio is a very good tool. It's freely available. The visualizer part is freely available. And uh, for further features, you need the purchase of licenses. But the same complex now, let's see how well we can get the interactions here in Discovery Studio. That is the second and very good option I recommend for interactions. So in this, we will 
open our complex structure that we had just saved and so i think yeah just five more minutes and then we can stop for here today okay so, okay so we had our complex saved here Now to analyze the interactions between these uh, entities, all of that, you have to use the Discovery Studio, it's a very good one. And uh, in this, it's very simple to calculate that. On the very top, you can see the receptor ligand interactions option. So this will automatically describe all the receptor ligand interactions in that. So for that, you have to select the receptor part. So let's select the protein and make it a receptor. And you have to select the ligand part and make it a ligand. So once you do that, it will just click on the ligand interactions and it will show you all ligand interactions that this makes with this protein. Then you have options to expand the perimeter also a little bit if you want. You have options to select what kind of interactions are available. So you have hydrogen bonds, classical as well as non-classical. So classical hydrogen bonds are the ones which are made by nitrogen and oxygen atoms and the hydrogen attached to one of them. Non-classical can be carbon-hydrogen bonds. So if the carbon has, uh, because of other atoms, an electronegativity, it can also make hydrogen bonds. Uh, halogens, the chlorine and all, they can also make non-classical hydrogen bonds. We have hydrophobic interactions. We have unfavorable also some of the interactions. So all those you can see. So you will see a very nice uh, interaction diagram here. You can uh, also show the distances between each of these interactions. You can type of interactions right over. So if you can overlay all those things, then you can uh, create a surface of uh, this entire protein, like the binding site. So that can be labeled with aromaticity. That can be labeled with hydrogen bond donor, donor, donor and acceptor. So you can see where exactly the donors are, where are exactly acceptors. You can do the charge distribution. Overall, you can see it's a, a kind of very neutral kind of a, a space, hydrophobicity hydrophobic space, ionizability and surface uh, accessibility. So that you can use to color this. You can also show the rest of the receptor. So you will know how exactly in a binding site this is fitting. So you can see very well how does it fit into this thing. More importantly, when you are uh, going to report all these things, you will need in 3D, you cannot see all the interactions. So you can also click on this 2D diagram, which will be very helpful when you want to uh, put it in a uh, thesis or report or something where you can see in 2D what all amino acids are interacting and what kind of interactions are made. Below you have the legend. Now many a times you need the tabular format to uh, understand what all things are there. Just click below on this small arrow and uh, I'll close this and here you have the non-bonded interactions and you will see in detail everything like you know which uh, atoms are involved like glycine 58 from protein and uh, the nitrogen from K23 ligand what kind of uh, interaction hydrogen bond whether it is a conventional or carbon hydrogen bond the classification then uh, what is the donor acceptor what kind of chemistry so all these details are very important to analyze it further and understand chemically what is happening over here. So this is where you can get it. You can save all these things data into an Excel file on tabular format and use it in your reports generation. You can also put this 2D diagram if you want into that. So this is one way to go about it. Uh, but Discovery Studio being a commercial software, there may be some limitations as to how many uh, publications you can get with that, how many times you can cite. Maybe some uh, licensing terms may, may be there when you get the this particular free version. So another option to analyze the interactions, which is commonly you will see in many of the publications is the leak plot. Leak plot is again freely available, but I won't show you how to use the leak plot, but that is also integrated in the server called uh, PDB sum from where you can get all these interactions and more data about your docking complex. So you can go to this uh, EMBL EBI PDB sum. Here you can uh, go to generate and upload your complex. So once you do that, it will calculate. But right now, I'll just uh, use the file itself just to show you the result. So that you can easily do and create the interaction pattern. So it gives you this kind of uh, entire report, you know, protein report, your project analysis of the protein, the gram channel plot and everything. 
then in the ligand you will find all the ligand interactions here so if you go below uh, it will load this lig plot over here directly which will be also uh, just like a 2d diagram to show how many interactions and again if you want those and a tabular format you can use this list of interactions things so let it load the image first so there are so this is the lig plot image as you may have seen in many uh, publications already so here you will see that where exactly is the hydrogen bond then where are the hydrophobic interactions all these amino acids and everything and when you click on this you get a very nice table showing the same thing that which atoms are involved what are the distances what type of interactions but as you may have seen most of the software don't give you the detailed information about type of non-bonded they just uh, divide it into hydrogen bonds and non-bonded contacts but in discovery studio you will get to the details of every type of bond its chemistry and everything so the, those are more useful and this is just one of the things you can do, but there are many things you can do with this going forward into the uh, docking and learn more about all those things. Unfortunately, we have crossed a lot of time, so I'm going to stop here now. There are a lot of more things we can do, but I will take now some questions, uh, answer some questions which are already there. And I'll definitely have another session with you all so that we can discuss more about these things. Okay, so let's go through some of the questions. I'll go from uh, down to the up. So, what is accepted RMSD? Uh, accepted RMSD, this is just internal reference. So, just with the first predicted post, that is reference. So, that is not at all reference to any other standardized or reference molecule. So, there is no such thing as accepted RMSD. Uh, if uh, let's, you can keep asking the questions. I will just go ahead and uh, just take some of the earlier questions which I have not covered. Uh, if the protein has more than 10 or 20 chains and 4 or 5 ligands, uh, well, in that cases, you have to be sure that which chains belong to what type of uh, molecule. In PDB, you usually see that information directly. So you don't have to take all the chains. You have to just take the ones. If your protein is made up of all those chains by itself, then you have to take the entire complex and docking will be very complex with such big uh, systems. The relationship between not to use interface residue and the uh, blind docking. Uh, blind docking is just that when you apply the entire surface while uh, not using interface residues that when you know that these residues are important for the proteins other functions or binding to other proteins then you should skip those so that protein is free to bind to other things. It depends on a case by case basis. If your aim is to block that interaction itself then you can use the interface residues also. Can we do docking of for small molecule co-crystals? Uh, you can do uh, usually, but these like algorithms are not as optimized for small molecules themselves, uh, but you can do it. Okay. So whenever you need to, uh, in Vena, it's not directly possible to include any kind of metal ions or any other element which is not standardly used, but in Autodoc, you can do that. So what uh, I will suggest, I'm going to uh, like cover this in maybe next sessions, but what you can do is for how to generate the parameters for the atoms which are not generally present, like, you know, metal ions or they may be platinum, whatever it is. So you, what you can do is go to this MGL tools or Autodoc tools website. And I think, sorry, not that. Uh, Autodoc tools website, you can go to the older website now. In this resources, you have a very nice uh, kind of examples of how to use this uh, force field docking. So they have example of ZN force field, but you can also in the similar way create the force field for any of your uh, particular atoms that you need. With this, you also have some scripts for covalent docking if you are interested in doing that and a lot of things can be done, which are little more advanced in processing. But uh, first learn about this basics, so it should be more clear for the next part. So uh, 
one more important step that I have missed that is the ligand preparation, how to generate or optimize the ligand. There are many, many softwares, but I'll show you very one small software that is Marvin Sketch. So he, he, here, for example, you have your uh, molecule. Essentially, optimizing means that the geometry of the molecule, whatever you're using, it's proper. All the bond angles, all the bond lengths, everything is in its proper state and the standard values. And uh, if you want to generate some conformers, that also you can do that. So within this same software, you can do all the protonation states calculation. You can do a generation of, uh, so you, under you, if you go to calculation, you can generate the protonation. You can get the isomers, tautomers and everything. You can generate multiple conformers. So all those things you can do with the help of this software. Uh, I'll probably cover it in some other uh, videos and I'll put it up. So thank you so much everyone for attending. Whatever questions are unanswered, either from your form or from this particular session, uh, be assured I will definitely answer them. Uh, I'll just email them to you whenever uh, in maybe next few days. So you don't have to worry about it. And I will definitely conduct some more sessions about these advanced topics further that you can have. So thanks a lot everyone for because we have uh, extended time a lot and uh, hopefully you have enjoyed the session. Thank you so much all the very best for whatever research whatever work that you're doing in this field and yeah so maybe uh i i, I will take it will take some time for me to go through all these questions again back scrolling up but maybe few two or three important questions i can take which have been uh already selected by our moderator um Rikang. so i will just go through them Okay, many of you are asking uh, about the certificate. Unfortunately, no, for such sessions, we do not have the provision for e-certificates. These are just kind of uh, interaction and learning sessions uh, for you to just get started with this very interesting topics. So there are no, unfortunately, certificates for this. Uh, how to set grid box parameters in Autodoc Vena? So in case of uh, the co-crystallized ligand, you can simply have those uh, just the way I showed by drawing the box. So when you draw that box around your binding site, it automatically sets the parameter for Autodoc Vena. Now currently we have done it directly through Chimera, but uh, I will take uh, another session where we can see how to actually build those by yourself and write it in a file. So that can also be done. And in case of absence of these uh, ligands, the parameters can be set with the help of prediction softwares. Again, we had very less time and a lot of things to consider. So I was not able to cover the entire prediction of binding sites. Uh, this video will be available on the same link that was provided to you after some time. So it will take time some to process the entire video and it will be available at the same uh, location. Yes, so for all of those who have selected uh, yes for the upcoming webinars, uh, you will definitely uh, get an email about those things. Will this video be, yes, this video will be present at the same uh, link in the YouTube uh, page. All right. So thank you so much everyone and have a good time ahead. See you soon probably in the next session. All right.
Hey, thank you so much, Philip. Uh, thanks a lot for your wishes. Uh, yes, you can just drop uh, me an email, Nazia, on the same email ID from where you got the confirmation emails and I'll send you the details about it. Okay, then uh, see you. Bye bye. And I'm ending the stream now. So thank you so much.